In an earlier video, I've shown you examine essentials and use the media picker to pick one image. But now I came across a plugin that allows you to pick multiple images in one go on iOS and Android and also save images to the photo gallery with just one line of code. How we can do all that magic? Let's go check it out in this video. Let's have a quick look at the thing that we're going to implement in this video. Um, you can see already the media gallery plugin sample. I have two buttons, pick images and save an image. So if you do pick images right now, you can see I can select up to three items, which is really cool. You can see it here at the top. And whenever we do that, I can select one, two, three, and then, you know, it blacks out. You can't do anything more until I unselect one and select another one. Um, but you know, if I click another one, then you cannot do anything else. And whenever I do, we can see the metadata of the file we can actually get the stream of the file and do whatever we want with the bits that we get from it. So that's really cool. And the other way around saving an image. So it doesn't have any visual feedback, but it's taking a screenshot of this actual image. And whenever we go here into the gallery, um, you can see that a white square was added. Well, actually, you can't see it, but believe me, see it's there. So we took a screenshot of the screen with essentials, um, and then put that on the photo gallery without any problems, just one or two lines of code. Let's go see how to implement this in your own application. Before we are going to look at the actual code, let's just have a look at the um, GitHub repository. So this person has created this plugin. Um, let's see if we can find out what their name is. Dima, Dima, thank you so much for putting this together. Um, it is a really good thing. He's from Russia, uh, it seems. So very cool. If you like this repository, of course, always consider uh, maybe sponsoring them on GitHub if that's a possibility or, you know, contributing back to their code a little bit. That is how open source stays sub sustainable. Um, so if we go look at the examine.media gallery, um, then, you know, there's a couple of things here. Um, it's supported by Android on iOS um, with a minimum version of um, 5 for Android and 11 for iOS. Um, I will get back to that in a little bit. And here is, by the way, a important note. So um, at the time of this plugin, um, the media plugin by James Montemagno is no longer supported. I'm not sure if that's entirely true. I think he is looking for someone to follow up on him um, to actually uh, maintain that library. So if that's something that you um, have ambitions to do, then reach out to James. I'm sure he will be happy to um, talk to you. Um, and examining essentials, I think the team is busy with .NET MAUI. That should not be, you know, um, a, a excuse to not maintain essentials anymore. Um, but hopefully there will be something. But yeah, I'm not sure if something like this will be added before .NET MAUI is here. Uh, but you know, hopefully this functionality will come into, um, you know, either Xamarin Essentials or .NET MAUI or whatever is going to be um, so that, you know, you don't need that extra plugin. But for now, we have this extra plugin, so let's use it. Um, so get started. I'm going to show you all of this. We need to add um, some init lines, some things for the permissions. I will walk you through it, no problem. Here we can see a little bit of the sample code that we're going to use too. Uh, but the most important thing is down here, actually, so platform differences. Um, on Android, when you're saving media files, the date and time are appended to the file name, so that's something that you might want to know. Um, and when using pick async, setting the selection limit parameter just sets multiple pick allowed. Now, to be honest, I didn't test it for Android yet. Uh, maybe I should do that before publishing this video. But I think what this says is, um, if you look here, um, you can set pick async and you can set here one. So only one is allowed or two or three or five. But I think setting this on Android, setting it to one will just allow you to pick a single one and setting it to anything more than one will just allow you to pick multiple. Uh, but I don't think it actually limits you in the uh, amount of files that you can pick. So that is something, you know, um, if you for each here through the results, that is something that you have to um, force then yourself whenever the user has picked um, files. So that's something that is good to know. Now here for iOS, uh, also multi-picking is supported from iOS version 14. .up, so that is pretty recent. Um, on older versions, the plugin will prompt the user to select a single file. So if you're using iOS 14 and up, 
um, you can have actual multiple files and the 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 pick um, thing that we just looked at here with the pick async it actually does that we'll see that in the sample um, so if you select three you can only select three which is really cool um, but on older versions that setting does nothing so it will just allow you to pick a single file um, so then you just default basically to um, the previous um, essentials functionality, if you will. Um, but so you know, that's that's good stuff to note because these are all paths that you need to consider when implementing this. Um, also, name without extension property in iOS version before 14, so before iOS 14, returns a null value if the permission to access photos was not granted. So if the user has not um, set allow to access my photos, then it will return a null value. So again, something that is good to know. Now here we have some screenshots uh, from Dima. He has provided that to see how it looks. Um, but let's just dive into Visual Studio for Mac and let's see how to actually implement this on your own project. So here we are in Visual Studio 2019. You can see it running on the left. I've whipped up a file new Xamarin Forms application. On the left, you can see the XAML page of the um, um, page that you can see on the right in the iOS simulator. Um, now, as always, you know, let's start by updating that title. And um, like I've mentioned, this plugin is supported by iOS and Android. And of course, you know, everything that you see here, you can also do with Visual Studio on Windows. Um, so let's set this to media gallery plugin sample and save that. And with hot reload, it will automatically update my running app um, in the simulator, but also on a physical device. So that is cool. Um, now, the thing that we need to do first, um, we need to install that plugin. So let's go over to our solution explorer, right click on the actual solution and do manage NuGet packages. And then I'm going to search for xamarin.media gallery. And that should pop up right here, version 100 at the time of recording. I'm going to check that. And it actually has a dependency on Xamarin Essential. So behind the scenes, it uses Xamarin Essential for um, a little bit. So that is um, um, nice to see. That will make the transition um, to bringing this to Essentials much easier. Um, let's click that Add Package, and we're going to add this to our shared and also to our Android and iOS project because the way this probably works is, you know, you have to install that little shared code, which is probably an interface or something, and then through the dependency servers or at least some platform specific code, you have to do some code on iOS and on Android. If you want to know more about that, the video is popping up on your screen right now um, to know more about the dependency service and how to, um, you know, make a little functionality like this maybe for yourself in your own project. Um, now, while I was talking, this package is almost installed. It's adding three packages here. Um, successfully added, there we go. And whenever we do, um, we can now access that media plugin. So we need to initialize it a little bit first. Let's do it first for Android. And we're going to go to our Android project right here and into the main activity. Um, and then we have a bunch of code here already. Um, and you can see Essentials comes in the box with a file new Xamarin Forms application these days. So Xamarin Essentials is already here. Xamarin Forms is being initialized, of course. And here on top, I don't think the um, order really matters here, but here we can now add the native media dot uh, platform dot init. There we go. And then we have to specify all the things uh, that are similar to the other init line. So this, this is going to be the activity. And this is going to be the saved instance state. There we go. Uh, this is just to pass down the activity and then whatnot so that it can do its work properly. Um, and also another thing that you want to do um, is handle the runtime permissions. So um, for essentials, it's done this way on the on request permissions result. For this media gallery, um, it's a little bit different. So we need to actually override the on activity result, activity result, there we go. So we're gonna do that one. And before we go to the base one, we want to add a little if native media dot platform dot check can process results. So it checks if it actually can process this result uh, for the activity. This this 
event is something that is called by the um, Android OS. Um, I'm, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Cold when an activity you launched exits, giving you the request code you started with, with the result code it returned, and additional data from it. So this is kind of like when you go back to um, this activity and it, it's going to see if it can do something with the um, result that is provided with the data here in these parameters. Um, so it, it's going to check if it can actually um, handle this. We have to pass in the request code, the result code. So basically all the things that you can see here um, at the top, the intent is going to be called the data. Um, and then do this. Oh, this is actually not the request code. Oh, this is the result code. There we go, result code. They look very similar. Um, and whenever the native media plugin can handle it, so this has something to do again with the runtime permissions, then it's going to say native media dot platform dot on activity result. Um, and we again pass in all these same things. So I can just copy this one right here, pass in all these parameters, and then it's going to handle that for us. Now, that is one part of what we want to do. Um, then the last thing we need to do on Android is um, we need to go to our properties and Android manifest. And um, whenever you start some doing something with files, you need that external um, storage thing. So you need to do the right external storage here and save that. And now we've got everything up and running for Android. So that's cool. Now, of course, kind of the same thing for iOS. Um, and we do that in the iOS project, of course, and then we go to the info P list. Um, and we, of course, need to provide those descriptions um, with, you know, whenever you access the photos or any other sensors or privacy sensitive data, um, you for iOS in the info P list provide a little description that is shown to the user in a dialog box like, hey, do you want to give this user permission or this app permission? Um, and then you can, as a developer, you can enter the description, um, which should be useful information for the user to convince them that it's okay to, um, in this case, allow access to the photos, right? So. It's a little pro tip right here. You can paste in the actual keys um, of the iOS. Um, it, so the, the info plist file is just XAML file and you can just paste in the keys here. So this is NS photo library add users description and it will translate that automatically to the one in the UI here. Um, so please let me use the photos. Photos without the typo, come on. Yes photos there we go and the other one i think one is kind of the legacy one so here we have the add another one there we go ns photo library uses description um, so i think one is the legacy one like pre ios 14 and the other one is ios 14 and up so be sure to include include them both so um, that you are always on the safe side please let me the photos can be the same thing, doesn't really matter. Uh, so there we go. That's all we need to do for the permissions bit on iOS. Uh, then we also need to do some initialization here um, in the app delegate. And well, actually, I'm checking my notes right here and we don't need to do any um, initialization code for iOS. So that is pretty cool. Yay. We can just start implementing this thing finally. So let's do the pick images first. And what we're going to do is I'm going to add a little button here um, that has the text pick images and images, images. So emphasis on the images because with essentials, you can only do one. Um, and that's the thing that we're going to see here. Okay, could not create this handler. That's fine, then I'll do it. Or let's check if it actually didn't create it secretly for us. Oh, I lost a stack layout here. There we go save that and here we go a button pick images let's see if we actually got the event handler we did not okay that's fine i can create it myself private void um, on pick images clicked object sender uh what is it event arcs arcs there we go there we go and now i should be able to paste this in here clicked boom okay so now what we want to do is actually um, implement the code to pick our images. So to do that, um, let's see what is needed. We are going to do the uh, media gallery. There we go. And I need to import the usings here. So 
Um, I'm going to let IntelliSense do that using media, native media. You can, of course, add that yourself here at the top, uh, but you can also let IntelliSense solve that. Media gallery dot pick async. There we go. And here we can um, set that selection limit. By default, it's set to one. Um, so, you know, but well, let's start with one. Let's see what it does. And then we can set the types. So it, this has media file type. There we go. And you can set it to images or videos. Um, and you can do both like this by doing the media file type video. So now you can do both. Um, and if you do only one, so if I leave out the, the image one, um, then you can do uh, only videos. And if you do only images, then you can do only images. But now I want to do both, so this is fine. Um, and this will return a media pick result. So we need to catch these results for results is this. And we need to await this because it's async. And then we want to um, async this one as well. So there we go. Now we can get the results from here. And we want to check if um, results dot files um, not is null. Well, actually, if it is null, and we want to maybe, you know, maybe this can be null. So let's do it like this. Then we want to say um, return because then nothing happens, right? So probably the user cancel or something or something else happens. So we're not going to go through this. But whenever they do, we can go to the for each and we can say var well file. Um, that's not actually a file, is it? It's a it's a it's a media media. I don't know. Let's do that um, in results dot files. There we go. We're going to loop through all the files in here. Um, so I don't think you know files is the most important one. What else do we have? Yeah, files is the only thing that is useful in the results. So we're going to loop through it, and I'm going to get the file name from it. So file name is file dot oops, file, uh, sorry, media, I call it media dot. And here you see all the things that we can use, right? So we can get the content type, we can get the extension, uh, the name without extension, uh, the type, I don't know what the type is. Um, and we can get the open read async. So you can get all the bits from the actual media file, right? So um, that you can copy it or upload it or do whatever you want with it. So that is pretty cool. Um, now I'm going to go get the file name. So the name without extension, there we go. Um, get the actual extension. Um, and it's then media dot extension, there we go. And lastly, um, get the content type. So for content type is media dot content type, there we go. Now let's just pop this into a display alert. Um, so the title is going to be our file name. And uh, furthermore, I'm going to use the string interpolation. And the last is the button is going to be an OK. Um, so the string interpolation, let's say extension um, is extension, there we go. And comma, um, content type is content type. There we go. So save that. And now whenever we pick one or more files, uh, it will show us a dialog with all the details. So let's quickly stop and start running this application again. Um, it should come back up momentarily. And then whenever we press our button to click uh, to pick the images, uh, the media files, we should see this up and running. So here the iOS simulator is coming back up again, our application is showing and I'm going to click the pick images. And there we go. Um, we can see the images here, these two white ones, they seem uh, weird, I realize that now. Uh, but these are actually images that I um, took before. Um, uh, you'll see that in a little bit, little spoiler alert. Uh, but whenever I click here, this um, image, this, these flowers, then you can see the file name is image 0111. Uh, the extension is JPEG and the content type is then also image JPEG. So this, um, I have the pick async and I set the pick limit to one. So it just allows me to pick one file and it automatically goes through here. But now let me actually stop this. And whenever I set this to, well, let's do three um, and I run this again, then now you will see that this picker, uh, because I'm running on iOS 14.5, right? Um, I, you can see that this allows me to pick images and it allows me to, it, it already says here at the top, select up to three items. So that is something that I find really cool. Um, so I can say one, well, maybe this, this waterfall and maybe these leaves right here. And then you can see the entire UI blanks out, right? You can see that 
I cannot pick any other images than these um, unless I, you know, um, click another one that is already selected. It will deselect that one and it allows me to select another one. Um, and then I can say add and it will go through the flow. So we should get three dialogues right here. Image 0111, we got that one. Uh, 04, 0004, we got that one and another one 0001. So that's really cool. We got the three images. Um, now, like I said, you can do all the other things. You can access the stream, the file stream, get all the bytes out there um, and you can do whatever you want with that. But the, old, the other cool thing that you can also do is actually save images to the kind of image rule or gallery or whatever you want to call it, uh, which is useful whenever, you know, in Essentials, you also have the um, screenshot API. I have a video on that, so go check that out. It's in the video description down below or popping on your screen right now. Um, or, you know, I have some videos on um, creating barcodes and maybe you want to save that barcode to the user's gallery. Now, with this plugin, you can do exactly that. So let's see how. I'm actually going to go back to the XAML file and copy this button right here. And now I'm going to say save image. Um, and I'm going to say on save image. There we go. Can it create it right now? Nope. Again, doesn't do it. Um, so I'll create it myself, no problem. On save image, click. Um, let's just copy, well, let's copy this one. We don't need the rest of the code. Um, okay, there we go. Indentation on save image click, there we go. Um, and now we're going to implement the save image click. So what I want to do first, like I said, a, a good example is the essential screenshot one. So let's just um, take that for uh, an example here. And I'm going to get that screenshot for screenshot is um, screenshot, I think. Let's see if we can get the using Xamarin Essentials in here. There we go. So what this does, again, IntelliSense, it will add the Xamarin Essentials here at the top. New screenshot dot um, capture async. So let's do that. And we need to make this await then. Um, and that's it. I don't think it needs any parameters. So it's just gonna capture our full screen. Uh, with that screenshot, let's see if we can save it. So we're going to say await, uh, what was it? Media gallery dot save async, see? So here we also have a save method and we can say what we want to save here. So first we need to specify the type. Well, in this case, of course, it's going to be an image because we're actually saving an image here. And then we want to specify the file path, uh, which is, you know, basically whenever you do it, at least on iOS, you can just specify the file name and something that you really want to note here while trying this. Um, so again, a pro tip right here. Um, you want to specify the file name with the extension and it will automatically figure out the MIME type and save it as an actual JPEG or PNG. I don't know what the other formats is that are supported, but I tried these two and that worked. Um, so you can save like my screenshot dot PNG and it will save it as a PNG. So, and of course, uh, well, why doesn't I, well, I need to specify the bytes, right? That's that's something I forgot to do. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, I actually, you know, talked over this. Um, so here you, you have a couple of overrides that you can do, which is cool. So you can say um, uh, media file type is image and then the file path. So that's not the file name, but the file path. And you can point it to a file path and take that path from, you know, your local storage and put that in the gallery. So that's one scenario that you could do. Also, the second one that we're going to use right here is our type, so again, an image, but we also have the byte uh, array. So you can take actual bytes and put that um, stream into, into your photo gallery. So then you're saving it like from a memory buffer or whatever. And then you have to specify the file name. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, and then, well, this is kind of the same overload. So not the byte array, but here you have the actual stream. Um, so you can take either a byte array or a stream. So that's the, both of the things that you can do. So actually, Let's go back with this one. And then I can say screenshot dot open read async. Also, you can do that here to get the actual stream. And we need to await that as well. And now it's going to save this actual stream um, to our gallery. So let's save all the things here, stop and restart our application. And while that is doing, it should come back up pretty soon. There we go. Now we have an extra button with save image which is first going to take a screenshot and then save that to the gallery. Now, I didn't do any visual feedback, so uh, we are just going to have to believe that it works, uh, which we can check with the pick images. Um, so with the pick images, you see now <laughs> um, three white things here. 
um, and whenever I select it, you can see it adds and it's called my screenshot. Um, it has a PNG and it's got the image PNG thing right here. So let's actually check if it's in the gallery. So we're going to use swipe here for the home, um, get to our gallery app right here, and it's not. So that's interesting. Do we have albums? Um, is it somewhere in here? Oh, here we go, albums. Oh, so it's probably these white ones right here. So it didn't see them, uh, but they are actually here. <laughs> uh, so here we go. I think this is the last one, see? And I got the other ones here to prove it too uh, while preparing this demo. So you can see there's a couple of screenshots here. I saved them all to the gallery and they're all here, no worries. That is how you can use this Media Gallery plugin to actually um, select more than one file or save images to the photo gallery as well. Now, ideally, this is something that you would want to see right baked into Essentials or .NET MAUI or whatever you want to use, but something that is inside of the box. Um, I think, you know, Dima has already mentioned that too, but, you know, he decided to go this route for now. And I know he's in touch with the team to actually maybe um, contribute this to the actual code base. So that would be really cool. But for now, here is how to use this plugin. And that's really cool. Again, Dima, thank you so much for doing this. I love pointing out these small um, libraries that are out there and help you solve this little little paper cut problem. So if you know any L, any other libraries that are out there that I have not spoken about yet, please let me know in the comments because I love seeing them. Um, other than that, thank you for watching my video. Please click that little like button, um, leave a little comment. That's always nice to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. And for anything else, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.